So it's fast approaching nine minutes after five o'clock and every Sunday around about this time I'm joined by a celebrity, a former MP or someone who's had an extremely interesting career to take a look at life after the job. We talk highs, lows and lessons learnt and what comes next on the outside. Now today my guest uh, was appointed special advisor to the Trade Secretary and elected to the European Parliament as a Brexit Party MEP before taking his career in a very different direction, uh, taking over the fourth generation salmon smoking family business or smoking salmon. Is, he gone? Can he, is it salmon smoking? I'll ask him. He's born in Islington. He was the president of the Cambridge Union, qualified as a chartered accountant at PricewaterhouseCoopers and said Liz Truss was right and the Treasury was wrong. Any ideas? Yes, you're right. Of course, I'm joined by politician and businessman Lance Foreman. Lance, thank you. Delighted to be here, Nana. It's very good to see you. Yeah, likewise. Now, Lance, what do you think when you hear an intro like that about yourself? Lance, what do you think when you hear an intro like that about yourself? Well, I sort of almost hardly recognise myself. <laughs> really? Amazing introduction there, thank you. you know, I, I, I mean, the career has been quite interesting and actually mm. it's been sandwiched, if you'll excuse the phrase, between... Um, smoked salmon and politics mm. and uh, back into uh, business again. And uh, I, I've often said that, uh, you know, dealing with oily fish and politics actually has a lot of uh, similarities. I guess, it's slippery and smelly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, do you ever get sick of salmon, though, just out of interest? No, I, it's, it's literally the first thing I do every single morning as I go into work. I have a little slice of smoked salmon and I worked out recently that I think I've, I've eaten about four times my body weight really? in smoked salmon since I've been uh, running the business. I want to ask you one thing about smoked salmon. People often say the mercury levels in the fish mean that it's not as healthy as... Is that true? People say all sorts of uh, ridiculous things. It's actually very, very good for you. Yeah. The key thing, if I get one message across on smoked salmon, is that the, the, the reason for smoking salmon, we've been doing it for over 100 years, mm. we're the oldest in the world now, the reason for smoking salmon is to preserve the taste of the salmon. It's not to give salmon a smoky flavour. So that is the message for Christmas. Smoked salmon to the taste of salmon. That's, that's in you. We've got a little shot of uh, somebody there. That's Ooh. not you, um, because... That what is, is it, you? That was me. I was slicing salmon this very afternoon. We're really busy at the moment that's with the lead-up to Christmas. That so was you, me. Get, you get down and dirty on the salmon as I well? Absolutely I absolutely do. I love... I, I, I was taught to slice smoked salmon like that when I was about six years old. It probably wouldn't pass health and safety uh, stands nowadays by my, by my dad. And uh, I, I just love to be with the team carving smoked salmon. It's very therapeutic, actually. I can imagine. So talk to me about you then. So um, where were you born and, you know, what was it like growing up? Tell me a little bit more about who you are. Um, well, I was uh, born and bred in London, lived in London uh, all my life. Um, and uh, I have uh, three sisters. Very sadly, my my dad passed away in the last month. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, to hear. He was uh, he was a Holocaust survivor. Oh. Um, and uh, he had a I mean a, a really very difficult start in life. Not like me, I was very lucky. Um, but he never complained actually, and uh, you know, and made a success of his he did, life. Yes. And uh, and and actually, it set such a great example to all of us. You know, it's so easy to complain, but he just made the best of everything. And that's sort of, uh, to some extent, what I you know I've tried tried to do the same myself. You know, we, we, in fact, when I joined our family business in in the 90s, within five years we were stricken with three major crises. We had a flood, uh, which uh, literally flooded the whole premises. We had a fire which burnt it down and then we were compulsorily purchased to make way to build the Olympic Stadium. Mm. It became quite a high-profile story. And, and in every single one of those challenges we always, you know, always sought to, to, to find the silver cloud under, the silver lining under the cloud. And, and you know, in every crisis that there's, you know, it, you know, if you suck your thumb and sort of moan about it, you're not going to sort the problem mm. out. But there, there's, you know, there's always hope in any crisis. So your dad, did he come here via the Kinder Transport? Skull shave, the power of a smooth, clean shave in the palm of your hand. Its blades can form first... He's approached his village, they scarpered, headed east, um, got into Russia um, and were taken prisoner by the Russians. He ended up as, as a child in Siberia, in a Siberian prison camp. Um, and then um, halfway through the war, when Germany attacked Russia, they were freed but had to stay within the bounds of Russia. So then he was in, in uh, Uzbekistan. Um, very traumatic time. Most of his family were, were wiped out. Um, you know, there were awful stories of an uncle of his uh, literally shot in the back of the head by the Nazis. And he found, when, when they went back to their old town at the end of the war, they found that literally everybody had been killed. And he came over to the UK 
as an orphan. He wasn't an orphan, but it was the only way his parents could get him to safety. Um, he was nine at the time. Um, and uh, they managed to get out about two years later and, uh, and met up. But uh, very traumatic uh, start to life. And we're, you know, I say we're all so lucky uh, when we reflect on that. How did he set up his business? Well, he 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 didn't actually. He he married my mother. Oh, I see. All and right. The, the, the business was started by my mother's grandfather back in 1905. Um, so, and she was an only child. And uh, um, when her father passed away, it was just it was a little bit too much. So he, he ran the business, took it over, and, and ran it for 30 years. And and in fact, you know, he was the one that really developed it. Every top chef in London, many around the world, uh, knew Foreman smoked salmon because of the work that my dad had. Uh, done. That's incredible, isn't it? You know, and, and you're you're carrying on with this legacy, sort of, and your family business. Did your other brothers and sisters did they get involved in it as well? Um, I, I have three sisters. They, sisters. Sorry. Um, some of them were involved for very brief uh, brief moments, um, but uh, no, I, I was the one that sort of have, have taken the lead, uh, taken the reins for the last thirty odd years, whilst also getting involved. You know, I'm, I am politics. a sort of political animal, yes. and uh, you know, always been engaged in that, yes. in politics. Well, I think from college, from my college days. I, I was uh, I was very actively involved. You mentioned I was president of the Cambridge Union, um, and, and then indeed after my you know when I left college I didn't go straight into the business. Mm. A lot of family businesses actually go horribly wrong when they just force the kids to go straight in. So I, I qualified as an accountant. I was then um, offered a job as. Um, Peter Lilly, now Lord Lilly's yeah. uh, political advisor. Um, and so I had a bit of time in politics before then returning to the family business. Um, and, um, and then it was really, I suppose, um, I, well, in the, in the sort of mid, late, uh, you know, um, 2014, 15, as the Brexit debate mm. was starting to, to happen, I, I started get, to get re-engaged again. I, I, I was a passionate Brexiteer. Mm. Um, are, I you, are you still a passionate Brexiteer? Well, I, I, I am. I just feel we've squandered the opportunity, uh, Nana. I, I think that uh, there was such a great opportunity, but it's there. You know, it's still it's, there. It's, it's, it's exactly. It's done. We, we just need to seize that opportunity that, that it presents. And in fact, at the moment, uh, you know, the, uh, growth in our economy at the moment it's not great but actually we're doing a bit better than Europe Europe's mm. really you know not in a not in a uh, healthy uh, situation economically at all at the moment mm, now you once described Jeremy Corbyn uh, on Twitter I think you called him a Nazi <laughs> what was that about <laughs> um, I might well have done you know there's I think I think politics is interesting you know people always talk about right wing and left wing yeah and actually, I think there's a circle rather than two sort of wings of this sort of long line. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, right wing fascism is really not that different to left wing fascism. Yeah. And they're both about authoritarianism. And uh, obviously, being Jewish, uh, I was very, very concerned about Jeremy Corbyn uh, getting into power. Um, I was a member of the Brexit Party. Mm. And um, I. Uh, in, in the lead up to the very last election when Boris was standing, I, I resigned from the Brexit party because I was so worried about Jeremy Corbyn. Mm. And I said to Brexiters, you know, I announced very publicly, you know, if you really do support Brexit, um, don't vote for the Brexit party, vote for the Conservative party. Um, Nigel wasn't terribly happy with me at the time, but we've sort of kissed and made up since. Um, but it was really important, A, to, to get Boris in to get Brexit over the line, uh, but also keep Jeremy Corbyn out. Well, of course, Jeremy's not here to defend himself no. either, so obviously. But it's just something that you, you're quite a, quite a prolific user on Twitter, so you're quite out there with some of the comments that you make. Some people might think that, but I understand you're passionate with your beliefs. I also understand that you're... What do you think, as you see the way this country is going? So after COVID, it did feel like a lot of people in terms of the work ethic and the size of involvement with the state and all the, the money that was pumped into people to stay at home. What, what, what do you feel about politics now when you look at it? Well, I think that was a huge mistake um, by, um, by uh, well, Rishi Sunak was Chancellor at the time. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it discouraged work mm. and... Uh, you know, we, we can talk a lot of, you know, the whole COVID inquiry is going on at the moment. Mm. Yeah, of course, every, no one really knew how to handle it at the beginning and the first lockdown was potentially justifiable. But after that, it became quite obvious uh, that 
there was no point in locking down kids, young people. There, there really you wasn't. know, there just wasn't. You were destroying the economy. It cost, you know, we spent something in the region of, you know, 400 to 500 million pounds uh, paying people to sit at home and do nothing. It was obvious that wasn't going to be good for the economy. It was obvious that was going to create inflation. And, uh, I, you know, it was a ridiculous policy. I think the real problem with politics today, though, is that the political class and indeed the civil service class don't have real commercial experience mm. and they don't really understand the impact of the decisions they make on real businesses and it's small business you know we're a small business but it's small businesses like ours that drive the economy yeah i, I think you are i think you're spot on when you say that now recently zika stumble was asked what working class is he was unable to define it at all in your view what is it because we're going to be discussing it later uh, working class, you know, again, it's, it's a label and it, it's a ridiculous label, actually. I go to work every single day. I'm working class. You know, I was there slicing salmon. You've just seen it. You've seen the video, seen the evidence. You know, throughout COVID, I went to work every single day because I thought it was important, running a food business, to lead by example. So what is working class? You know, does it, who cares about these labels? It doesn't really matter. Um, I think work is really important. Um, it's obviously important for the economy, but I think it's just very good for your own, you know, self-esteem. So what are you up to now? Is there anything that we should look out for you doing? Is there anything coming up? Coming up, um, well, I'm frantically busy at the moment for the next few days because this is our uh, crazy busy season in the lead up to Christmas. Obviously, next year is a big political year. Yeah, We've got the election huge. coming up. Um, I, I, I do have I do have grave concerns. Um, you know, everyone talks about uh, you know it's it's uh, it's all sewn up by Keir Starmer. I don't think it is. Well, it, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, what worries me is that. Uh, is that the hard left politically assassinates Starmer uh, within a very short space of time. Obviously of, not of, literally. No, 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 politically assassinated, <laughs> not, not... Not literally, not, just none in of that, case. None of that stuff. <laughs> no, absolutely not. But, but, but you know, I, th I think that th th that is a fear. Um, I don't think people see a huge amount of difference between Starmer and Sunak. I think people are just so disaffected and disenchanted mm. with all politicians at the moment. And I think that actually what that could mean is that um, people either might just stay away or they might take a chance on a third party. And I think that the Reform Party has a, an interesting opportunity uh, going forward, but I think their strategy is wrong. I think fighting the whole country is, is silly. I think they should focus on a, a small number of seats, which might end up giving them the balance of power. Well, you never know, though. You saw what happened in Argentina, so people well, might be that annoyed that they absolutely. might I'd... simply sway. You never know. Listen, absolutely. Lance, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you Likewise. so much uh, for joining me today. That is, of course, businessman Lance Foreman, otherwise known as the Salmon King. Right, it's coming up to 22 minutes after 5 o'clock. This is GB News on TV, online.